Happy Sabbath, church. Happy Sabbath. God is good. All the time. God is good. Well, welcome again to the house of God. We are here to worship and praise and magnify his name. For those who are online, we say welcome. And we look forward to your participation as we begin our song service. But before we do so, let us stand for prayer. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for this morning. We thank you, God, for the opportunity of coming to church. We thank you, Father, for the free will of worshiping you. We ask, Father, that as we go into our worship session now, that you will please to come into our hearts. We ask, God, that you will be with each member that are here. Help, Lord, that they will receive the blessing that you have in store for them. We ask that you will come into our hearts now. Refresh us with your Holy Spirit, we pray in your name. Amen. Our first hymn will be hymn number 83. Oh, worship the King, all glorious above. Oh, gratefully sing his wonderful love. He's worthy to be praised.
And I am sure that we all have been blessed by the powerful presentations which our own Pastor Shilin Ford has made thus far. Of all the gifts that God has given us, two of the most precious come from the Garden of Eden, the Sabbath and the family. These gifts center on relationships with God and with the people closest to us. It's noteworthy to mention that Satan concentrates some of his most vicious attacks on these two special gifts. What God has meant for our greatest happiness, Satan attempts to, and to a large extent has succeeded to turn into misery. When God created Adam and Eve, he didn't just create two individuals to coexist side by side. He created a beautiful blending of two into one special unit, the world's first family. We gain, gain a glimpse of this creation in Genesis 2:23. When Adam exclaims, This is now bone of my bones and the flesh of my flesh, you shall be called woman. Of course, verse 23 only tells a minute part of his story. So permit me to share with you verse 24. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and they shall become one flesh. What a beautiful picture. What a beautiful loving picture. How God longed for this closeness, this love to exist in every family since the beginning. But as we are painfully aware, sin reared its ugly head, bringing misery and sorrow. But all is not lost. Our creator, the almighty builder, restorer, and keeper of all things, committed to, 
to him. God can still help families today experience the warmth, love, and closeness that he intended. Sister White in the book Adventist Home, page 28, penned, the presence of Christ alone can make men and women happy. All the common waters of life, Christ can turn into wine of heaven. The home then becomes as an Eden of bliss. The family, a beautiful symbol of the family in heaven. At this time, I'm going to invite the praise team come and lead us into our opening hymn, hymn number 652, Love at Home. Unseemly, seeketh own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. Joseph not in iniquity, but he rejoices in the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. 
Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. And whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. Here endeth the reading of God's holy word. Let's pray. Holy Sabbath, day of rest, by our master, rich and blessed, God created and divine, set aside for holy time. Great God of heaven, we come in thy courts to worship thee this Sabbath morning. We're just grateful for all the bountiful blessings bestowed upon us throughout this week. The what's protected us, and for this we're saying thank you, Lord. The what's provided for us, and we're saying thank you for thy guiding hands and thy protective care. Lord, we're here to worship thee, so maxing thee in a special way is to take away any form of sin that will prevent us from getting the blessings, getting the blessings we need that will strengthen us in our spiritual path. We're just thankful for this congregation gathered here on this thy holy Sabbath day. Be with each and every worshiper today and help that our hearts and our minds may be lifted heavenwards. Lord, we recognize that the devil is like a roaring lion. He's here to destroy the families. And as a result, we have a broken society. But we know if we put our trust and our confidence in thee, all these problems will be solved. So be with the church at worship. Be with each and every family represented here. And Lord, help that as we worship, we will have a close walk with thee. And we look forward for the day, Lord, when thou burst the eastern sky, where we will say, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him, and he will save us. Bless us as we worship today again. In Jesus' name. Happy Sabbath Church. And so we continue our mission story that um, we have started since um, last week at, with Henry at um, Tanzania. So last week, Henry found himself attracted to the Seventh-day Adventist faith after enrolling at the Adventist University of Arusha in Tanzania. He enjoyed worship services, vegetarian meals, and Sabbath activities, but he remained a devout member of the family um, denomination. During his second year of uh, studies, Henry met a young Adventist woman named Doreen from Kenya at the University of Arusha. She was among the university's many international students including those from Rwanda, Uganda, Botswana, the Democratic Republic of Congo, and elsewhere. Henry, who was from Tanzania, was interested in learning more about various African cultures. He was especially interested in learning more about Doreen. Henry and Doreen become close friends. They followed each other everywhere. They helped each other with their studies and they prayed together. Sometimes they engaged in vigorous debate about cultural differences between the two countries, Tanzania and Kenya. At first, Henry and Doreen didn't speak about their religious differences. Doreen thought that Henry was an Adventist. Her assumption was understandable because Henry actively participated in religious activities on campus. He helped um, lead worship services. He sang in the student choir where he learned that he was, where, um, when she learned that he was not an Adventist, she and they both began to discuss about God every chance they got. 
Then Henry was invited to attend a spiritual retreat for the university student in Rwanda. The retreat was organized by the Adventist Church of East Central Africa, Tibetan, whose territory encompasses of Tanzania, Rwanda, Kenya, and eight other countries. It was Henry's first visit to Rwanda. He had only known the country for its slogan, land of a thousand hills and a million smiles. Now he got to see it with his own eyes. Returning to Tanzania after the trip, he was asked to speak about Rwanda at a special program for each leader. He was surprised that he, a non-Adventist, was asked to talk. Inspired by the trip, Henry was ready to go to the next spiritual retreat of university students, which was held in Kenya the following year. It was his first visit to Kenya. He sang with his um, university choir at the retreat, and their music received high praise from the other students. He found that the meals were delicious. This, uh, the schedule was well organized, and the lodging was comfortable. The experience increased his appreciation for the Adventist faith. The retreat in Kenya was extra special because he was able to attend with Doreen. Henry graduated from the University of Awisha with flying colors. He was among the top students in his class. After graduation, Henry continued to worship on Sabbath. He kept in touch with Doreen. Five years after graduation, he decided to, get, to give his heart to Jesus and got baptized. After that, he proposed to Doreen and they both were married. And we expressed joy that part of the quarter's 13th Sabbath offering will help expand the facilities of the university. He hoped that many students through their time at the university will receive the truth and accept Jesus Christ as he did. Very beautiful story. And we, we, we can see here how a solid relationship had been established. And this is what God wants for us. An ordered life. Solid relationship was established. They became friends before. Indeed. Yes. Where they pray together. Study together. And they, they had debates together. Wonderful. <laughs> Excellent relationship. And this is what the Lord wants for us. A well-ordered life. A foundation well-established. A relationship well-established in Christ. And so that we will have a rich and strong. Have a wonderful Sabbath, Virginia. The story of mission, the story. Preparation for existence throughout all eternity. Share lessons gained in school each Sabbath. We will now enter class. We will be looking at the lesson captioned onto the list of these. Please stand while I pray. Our oh, Father, we are so grateful to you for all that you have done for us. You have prepared, you have packaged a lesson so that we can learn more about you. Lord, help us to recognize that with you nothing is least because you have said in your words, he that is faithful in that which is least will be faithful in that which is plenty. Guide our thoughts and help us to grasp the message that are ingrained in this week's lesson. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
Dear God and Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege to go into your words. Lord, we thank you for the privilege to know more about you, that we as sinful, debased humans can know more of divinity, and you have given it to us in the form of your words. And as we go into them, we ask that you will pronounce a special blessings, blessing upon those that read and upon those that hear. Be with us, I pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This week we look at a very interesting <laughs> lesson study. Unto the least of these. And, and just before I come back to the topic. Memory verse. Which is taken from Matthew 25, verse Um, you bless inherit the kingdom prepared for you the foundation yes this is the text that we are working towards yes man and enter into that which is called but as I as I look at this unto the least of these. Mm. And when I delve through, I realized that some of the least that lesson spoke about are widows. Yes. <laughs> who have lost the mm. husband. Yes. E e even though the Bible haven't spoke about widow, yes. we may also incorporate widow. Yes. Uh, it speaks about the orphan. Yes. Slash the fatherless. Yes. Uh, can imagine the father is the breadwinner of the house, right? And he basically died for whatever reason, Good. and the family are left, as we would say in Jamaica, term to fend for themselves. Yes, they can be at a disadvantage, right? Uh, another one that the lesson speaks about are the strangers slash alien, those that would have come to us from probably different countries, different communities. They come to us having nothing. We also have to look out for them. Yes. And it also speaks about the poor and the destitute. For whatever reason, persons will always be poor. <laughs> the Bible says that the poor will always be among us. Yes. Sometimes it's not by choice. Sometimes it's by chance. Yes. Where a person ends up poor. Mm. Sometimes it is based on wrong decision. Yes. And the way that you were grown up. That's right. Right? 
uh, a lot of us don't have the privilege of going to university and get meaningful employment, but somehow they live a destitute life. Yes. And God uh, is calling on those that he has blessed tremendously to offer a helping hand, as we will see as we delve into this week lesson. Your point. Yes, and Elder, uh, before we move on to Sunday, just a few points I wanted to highlight mm -hmm. is that you said earlier that the poor will always be with us. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the, this week was the first time I realized that that text was said more than once in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And the lesson shows us that that was said in Deuteronomy first, and then when Jesus came back, mm -hmm. he, when Jesus came, he also said, the poor we have Emphasize always with God. us. And you have to notice that when God repeats something in the Bible, it is sure. You, mm -hmm. Every word is sure, but these ones you can know of a fact that these ones are very, very, very sure. The poor we have always with us. And even today, we can see the poor with us. Uh, the second point, Ella, is that you spoke, you hinted earlier at the fact that the man was the, the patriarch, the breadwinner of, this, of the family system. Right. And what you, why... Widows and orphans and the fatherless were in such a bad situation because the father was taken out of the equation. Mm. And so widows never had any source for food because their husband had died. Farmer, the, fam, the children did not have any food because mothers in that time did not really go out and work. Right. And so the father was moved out of the equation and they would be at a disadvantage. And the orphans, you know, both parents gone. That's a very sad ordeal to deal with. And so the Bible really gives special attention to these people. We move to Sunday, Allah. Uh, Sunday, the life and ministry of Jesus. Uh, and we see when, in, in the start of Jesus' ministry, when he went into the synagogue, looking at Luke chapter 4, verse 16. Right. And I just want to highlight some of, the, of what happened. He said that, so Jesus came to Nazareth, yes. where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, yes. stood up to read. We were having a conversation one night earlier about the blessing of the Sabbath, Yes. how it is such a blessing to know that when you work throughout the week, and you may not have the opportunity to get enough rest, Yes. Mm -hmm. but the blessing comes elder. Yes, man. When we can come and bask. In the glory in the of goodness God. of Christ. Yes, that's right. Go home and get a rest. Mother of the, the blessing, you can feel that blessing even before you enter the church. Matter of fact, the sunset evening before, the mm -hmm. Friday, that Friday evening, you can feel a certain feeling, right. serenity, a, a feeling of peace, the blessings of the Sabbath just setting in and you're just marinating it. Yes, yes, yes. And, and verse six, verse 17 said, and he was handed the book. Mm -hmm. Now, we know that the book wasn't like a Bible. It was a scroll. Scroll, right. right. He was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And he read from Isaiah 61. Yes. He said that the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Yes. Uh, we know that when Jesus was, even before he, he was born, Isaiah, the spirit the, came down yeah. because Mary was filled with the Holy Spirit. Yes. Christ, Christ, Christ was anointed from then. Yeah. But his full anointment, anointed came when he was baptized. He said that the Spirit is upon me because he has anointed me That's right. to preach the gospel to the poor. Notice he highlight the poor again. Mm -hmm. and, and they came, came first. And they came first. Yes. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. To proclaim. To proclaim liberty yes. to the captive. And recovery of sight to the blind. Yes. To set at liberty those who are op oppressed. Mm -hmm. and, and it's not just in the physical realm, Elder. Spiritual. Uh, yes. He came to heal the brokenhearted. Mm -hmm. Yes. Satan has tried to separate us from Christ. He has, yes. He has tried so many times. And... A lot, of, a lot of us become broken hearted mm. in, in, in going on the side of Satan. Mm -hmm. right? He have came to set at liberty, the captive. That's right. Not just those that were enslaved by the Romans, but were enslaved in sin. 
because we know that the Bible says that he who the son set free is free indeed. That's right. Right. He came to set liberty to those who are oppressed. That's right. Not just oppressed by the Roman eye, but oppressed by Satan, Satan. and his imps. Yeah. Yeah. Right? In trying to destroy our life and to proclaim the acceptable year of, of the Lord. Lord. Yeah. Jesus came that we may have life and have, and have it more, more abundantly. Yes. Right. So Jesus, as I said, Jesus was fully anointed at his baptism for the mission ahead. He was filled, he was endowed. The Bible said that when he was baptized, the Holy Spirit came down yes. in the form of a dove. That's right. right. He was filled, he was ready for the ministry and the challenges that he would face ahead. Right. Your take. You know, Ella, uh, one thing that Jesus, and we are to be like Jesus, Jesus put the poor as his priority. Mm -hmm. And our main duty on earth here is to emulate Jesus. So that says of us, if we are imbued by the Spirit, we will care for the poor. If we are filled with the Spirit, we will look out for those who are less fortunate. If we are filled by the Spirit and have a genuine love, the love of Christ in our hearts, we will care for those who are disadvantaged. Uh, let us going forward think about those who are not living such a comfortable life and help them to live a better life. And it's not a lip service. Uh, no, no lip service here. It's not to say, yes, I'll take care of the poor. Mm -hmm. uh, I heard someone say that most times when persons are in difficulty, you will hear some person say, I'm praying for you, I will pray for you. But why not take the person same time and pray with the person? Yes. Do it on spot. And so persons will say they will help the poor. And if I had, I would do this for the poor. <laughs> but God has blessed you whatever or however little it is. Yes. He has blessed us. <laughs> that we can offer a little to those that are less fortunate than ourselves. And, and, and the lesson makes it clear that Jesus' love for the poor was one of the greatest evidence of his messiahship. One of the greatest evidence. Because he loved, he loved the poor. He mingled with them. He ate with them. That's right. right. He abided with them. When he was calling his disciples, he never went to the rabbi or the elite. Mm -mm. No, he went not to at the, all. the coarse fishermen and those are the persons that, that he associated with. Right, go sure. ahead. Uh, so we move on at this time, Hilda. We, we can, we're going to Monday. Monday's lesson. Yes, Monday. Uh, we start off by saying this statement mm -hmm. that's in the quarter. In their writings, the Bible's authors included many of God's provisions for the poor. So, Provision for the poor was a main theme. Is a, mm -hmm. is a main theme in the Bible. The strangers, the widows, and the fatherless, um, the Bible gave special emphasis to. Now we have record that this went as far back to Sinai days, Mount mm -hmm. Sinai days, where God set up a very beautiful oh. system to take care of the poor, a yeah. benevolent system. He said that, look, you Israelites, you you have fields. Guess what you do? Reap the field for six years. Those takings are yours. Mm -hmm. But oh. in the seventh day, in the seventh year, elder, mm -hmm. they were asked to mm -hmm. not glean the fields and not not trouble the corners of the field either. But leave those parts, leave the fields for the poor in the seventh year. And the God promised that you know if they followed His instruction, then they would be okay. But Israel. Over time, we see Allah in the Bible became a place of injustice. They disregarded the mm -hmm. poor, and so that till it, when when it reached to Jesus' time, the Pharisees had no regard for the poor whatsoever, and so they were in exile for that. They fell out with God many times for their injustice. Right, right. Ella. So your your point. And and as I said earlier, we may consider ourselves also as poor. Mm -hmm. And say, but I don't have to give <laughs> because I'm poor. I'm, poor. I, I'm yeah. in need. Imagine. Uh, well, I came from a poor beginning. Mm. But God, in His love and His mercy, I've seen His blessing in my, in my life. Thank God. And God is not asking us to give 
something that we don't have. No. He would be an unjust God to say, give something that he knows you don't have. That's right. But when we, whatever we attained in life, we have a little to give to the poor. Mm -hmm. uh, but rather we, he, we want to use his, for, use his blessing for our own satisfaction. Purpose. Yes. You understand? We want, to, we want to live flashy life, drive nice cars, name brand clothes. But they are poor among us, even right. in our church, even in our community. Right. That uh, you have your dinner, elder, and you eat and have leftovers, while somebody on the road doesn't have any food. Probably just have a glass of water to drink mm. and go to his or her bed. Yes. But God, not unlike the rich young ruler, God is not asking us to give all that we have. But even if he puts us to the test and said, said Ella, give all that you have, yes. we should trust him and obey him mm. that he have a plan for us and we should just obey in every aspect of our life. That's right. Uh, the, the psalmist say that and give some direction on how we should treat those that are in need. He said we should defend the poor and the fatherless do justice yes. to the afflicted and needy. Yes. Deliver the poor and needy. Free them from the hand of the wicked. Because they are always at a disadvantage. That's right. So persons take disadvantage of their vulnerability. Right? Uh, they can defend themselves. Either the justice system is against them. Mm. Even in Jamaica, if you are accused of a crime and you don't have, even though you might be innocent, and if you don't have a good lawyer, elder, you yes. might end up spending some good years yes. behind bar right. for something that you did not do. Yes. Right? So God is, God is also calling us to defend and give the poor justice. Yes. And oftentimes it is the wealthy that sometimes get justice because they have the means and the capability of getting a good lawyer. Right. And the innocent basically suffer uh, for what they did not yes. do. Right. Your point, go ahead. You know, yes, and we are to use our means to defend the poor. Mm -hmm. uh, something that stood out to me in this week's lesson, you know, the, the theory, well, the, the practice of social Darwinism. And natural selection. And natural selection. Mm -hmm. Uh, let me just read this for the viewers online. Right? In contrast, even in more modern times, particularly in England, under the impact of what has been known as social Darwinism, many thought that it, that not only was it no sorry, many thought that not only was there no moral imperative to help the poor, but also that it was in fact wrong to help them. Instead. Following the forces of nature, yes, quote and unquote, in which the strong survive at the expense of the weak, social Darwinists believe that it would be detrimental to society to help the poor, the sickly, and the indigent because if they multiplied, they would not only weaken the social fabric of the nation as a whole, however, they would only weaken the social fabric of the nation as a whole. However, cr however cruel, this was the logical outgrowth of the belief in evolution and the false narrative it proclaims. Now, you know, that er um, evolution and natural selection says that, you know, the strong, um, they basically outlive the weak to, um, to make the, the, the society stronger. And they say, they say the, the, fit, the fittest of the fittest. The survival of the survive. fittest, right. Mm -hmm. And so what happened is that so if, if it is that you want all the strong to survive, you don't mind the weak dying because they're only going to weaken your mm -hmm. social fabric. But it is not for us to determine who and who will make our society strong. Jesus has that. And if we follow Darwinism and, and, and all those other theories, then we'll put ourselves in problem because we will neglect those that we are supposed to care for. Darwinism is a very crude, very crude concept um, because, you know, 
it basically says like if they're weak and they're poor they're not supposed to even be here so let's not cause them to be here any longer let them die and so you know very crude concept there be, 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 because the the meager resources will have to be shared right yes and 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 if if, if you are not contributing to society meaningful employment right you don't worth living yes so why should we give a, a, our, our, our hard earned means to you to you you understand yes. but it shows the lack of empathy the lack of love the unchrist like mindset in those days when, when I read the article Elder uh, my heart bleed to know that as I said earlier it's not sometimes choice why persons are poor but sometimes it is the chance right why they are poor. Nothing that they have done. Because they, they, they were born and grow in poverty. That's right. And you were born and grow in a wealthy family. And you disregard the poor and want to see them obliterated from the face of the earth. So that you, the rich, can survive. But Christ, who left the splendor of heaven, left the riches, the wealth of heaven, came to earth. Okay. Live among the poor. Came, came poor as well. He was born in a manger. Yes. Right? He came and lived among the poor. He associated, he mingled with the poor. And he want us, if he has blessed us, to have regards and love for the poor. That's right. Because that's right. they are his creation. Yes, indeed. And, you know, this takes us to the story of the young rich ruler. Mm -hmm. Tell us some about that. Well, it's taken from in Matthew. It was Matthew 19, 16 to it, 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 It's recorded in, in, in uh, what, three, three of the synoptic the, the gospels. Synoptic gospels. Right. But. This account is Matthew's. Yeah, this account is Matthew. And this, this, this young rich ruler, Ella, he was blessed, he was wealthy. He was, in my estimation, a. Uh, obedient person of the law yes. because he said it but he came to Jesus running to Jesus and asked him good master mm -hmm. now to me he want to flatter his way yes. past Christ he said good good master he didn't want to know what he must do you know no he want to know what get good him. things yes. should I do yes just just, just the good part yes what are the good things that I can do to inherit eternal life. Right. He never want to go and mingle and associate and get himself dirty and no. Didn't want to give. He want to know the good things. Right? And Jesus said, man, rephrasing, if you want to enter heaven, after he said he's, he, he keep the law whatever, God said, sell all that you have and give it to the poor. Sell all that you have and, and give. give it to the poor. And the rich wrong young, young ruler, he was, he walked away vexed and... Yes. And, and you, you, you know what struck me also, Elder? The Bible did not mention anything else. About the rich About the rich wrong, wrong young he, ruler. He gave up his, he gave up the chance he had to become somebody as in, of importance to the work of Christ. And he gave up eternal things for the temporal. And yeah, that was his downfall. And we know that Jesus would have able to read his mind. Yes. To know what was lacking. Yes. So Jesus hit the point and said, Jesus was a bit fear first. He said, if you want to enter heaven, you need to do this, keep the law, whatever. He said, I've been doing this all my, my life. Youth. But Jesus said, one thing that you lack. Yes. One thing that you lack. And and you know, Ella, we used it because we, we, we are running down to the end. Uh, we use this time to join, to contrast him with Zacchaeus, who is the next mm -hmm. person on the list. Now, uh, the lesson points out that in contrast to the rich young ruler, Zacchaeus didn't wait on Jesus to ask him to give to the poor. He, he, he made the offer. That's right. Mm -hmm. And when, G, when Zacchaeus was convicted of his wrong, wrongful state, he made the offer to give to the poor out of that which he had. You see, guys, we know the story. Mm -hmm. Zacchaeus was a tax collector. 
and tax collectors were very hated in that time, mostly because they exacted more from even the poor than they should have actually received. And so Zacchaeus, along with the Roman government and along with other tax collectors, was hated. Uh, but he did something that the rich young ruler did not do. Zacchaeus sensed his wrong, and he and the, also, the other thing is that riches weren't Zacchaeus's God. Mm. Riches. It was not. Was not. He said, "If I have if I have taken anything unjustly, mm -hmm. I will return it fourfold." Yes. So yes. He, so, so, so I just said, riches wasn't his problem. No. He was willing to give. And let us be like Zacchaeus today. You know, we all we always preach Zacchaeus in sermons. You know, but are we? taking the lesson from Zacchaeus. Because Zacchaeus was willing to move anything out of his life that was going to prevent him from making it right. And we have to borrow that principle from Zacchaeus. We run down to the last man. Consider the man, I, Joe. I, I, I want to say something more. Go Zacchaeus ahead, Ella. Pastor. Yes, go ahead. Uh, some of us have acquired wealth, just like Zacchaeus. Mm -hmm. Zacchaeus went up into the sycamore tree. Yes. Some of us place ourselves on a pedestal. Mm -hmm. that we feel ourselves so high that we cannot come down to the level of the poor. Wow. Yes. But God is asking us, Ella, to come down. Come down. And it is better for us to come down willingly than him have to take us than down. God have to take Ooh. us down. That's right. Because, That's right. trust me, Ella, when God takes you down, you know. And you don't, you don't know if you're ever going to go back. <laughs> so. It's like everything is against you, you know. Yes. So like God said, Zacchaeus, come down. He's calling us some, on some of us who have placed ourselves so high that you even pass the poor and can't even call to them. Man. You see them on the street and you turn a blind eye. God is calling us to come down. Don't let God take us down, Elder. You know, Elder, uh, as we do our final statements and, and, and you know, in, 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 uh, incorporate Joe in, in, in that same breath. We have to realize that the poor, they are not animals mm -hmm. and they are not any less of people not than we all. are. Not at all. It is just the mercies of God and us probably making a few good decisions that we are in a different position than they are in. They are people like us. They, are, they have personalities like us. They have feelings like us they have needs like us and we have to treat them that way jesus did not walk past a soul a poor soul on the road because jesus valued the poor and it is laid upon us to value them as well they are skin flesh and bone just like we have we are they have a chance to make it to heaven we have to treat them that way ella consider the man joke uh, it's a few persons in the Bible that God gives high regards. Mm -hmm. And Job was one of them. God, God called Job perfect. Upright. And upright. That's right. Have you considered my servant Job? God boasted in us. He was blameless. A... Yes. And I, 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 I hope God can say, have you considered yeah, Vinton? Yes. I'm have you considered Joel? Joel? Man. You, you I'm might. telling you. Yes. But, but, but Job was... Very rich, but he looked out for the poor, yes. the less fortunate. And, and, and one thing that struck me, Job did not sit and wait for them to come to him. Not that he, he, sat, said he, he sought it out. He seek after them, Pastor. Yes, yes. To find out their needs, what their lackings are. Yes, yes. And try to assist. Yes. Some of us sometimes want to find out how the poor are doing, you know, not, not for us to help, you know, but to we'll have something look to down say. at something to say. Have something to say. Job did not seek out in order to have something to no, say. No, 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 no. He seek out because he want genuinely mm. to help. And right? someone to give when the cameras are there and, and when people can see. But Job, whether or not, and we're going to see a quotation from mm -hmm. Helen White in this lesson that, it's not for us to give so that man can see. But when we give, all heaven appreciates ah. what we do. Ellen White says it. 
all heaven appreciates what we do. And let me just read this last, this last quote here. It says, um, page 639 from the Desire of Ages. Every deed of mercy makes music there that's in heaven. The Father from his throne numbers the unselfish workers amongst his precious, most precious mm -hmm. treasures. Ella, you can wrap up. Uh, my takeaway, Ella, is that no matter how poor you may think you are, are in need, there's always someone below you. Below you. That's right. And don't feel that you don't have enough to give. Whatever God has blessed you with, give from it. Give from it. We no matter how small. The widow gave her might. And with a willful heart. As you said, the widow gave her might. And Jesus said she gave more than everybody. All those that have given. Wow. In the treasury. Yes. So Ella's point is don't think you're too poor to help. Not too poor. Help to with help. what you have. And you know, my closing point, Ella, is that God my high point was one of the high points is that God regards your kindness. He, all of heaven rejoices mm -hmm. when you are kind to one soul. And you have to bear that in mind. Some of us are so cold, so callous, so indifferent. Let us change our minds. Let us change our hearts. And let us care more about those around us. Ella. So until next week, my fellow online viewers, whatever God has impressed on your heart to do, for the poor, for the needy, do, because it is doing to God as you would have done to them. When God comes, he will say that, I was hungry, I was in prison, I was sick, did you? So do your part as we walk this life into eternity. Thank right. you, Elder. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for this, your lesson. It was indeed an inspiration, a blessing. And help us to never forget to be kind to those around us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. Unit leaders, your time is up. Thank you. Good morning and happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Are you happy to be here this morning? Amen, amen. It has been a long week with lots of challenges, but we want to thank the Lord for this day that the Lord himself has sanctified and set aside for his people to worship him. We have gone through many challenges that happened within the week, but the Lord is faithful to us. So we have to come to worship, honor, and give praises unto him. I want to take a moment to extend a warm welcome to our online visitors and those who are worshiping with us today in church. <clears throat> we are happy that you have chosen to worship with us today. I just want you to know that you are present with us is highly appreciated and we hope 
that you will feel God's love in a new and refreshing way. As we come to worship the Lord today, let us keep on trusting him with our lives and just know that whatever you are facing today, the Lord has taken care of it. Feel welcome to the Sabbath worship and God loves you all. Family is ordained by God. It was before the church, or rather, the first form of church on earth. Since the family is the bona fide heart of the church and the society, Christian families are called to be instruments for winning and holding members for the Lord. In a world where brokenness in families have become like houses without roofs and sheltered by God's friendship and the sense of being rested in his providential care and guidance. This week's family focus to rebuild and to restore is God's call to a reuniting, a turning, a restoring, and a re-solidifying. In an environment where multiple forces are determined to pull members from our families and from the family of God. The very last two verses of the Old Testament prophesy what will take place before the Lord returns? Please listen while I read Malachi 4, verses 5 and 6. Behold, I will send you Elijah, the prophet, before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. I now leave you with the real idea that a happy, godly family is but an earlier heaven. Let me repeat. A happy, godly family is but an earlier heaven. May God bless you as you enter heavenly places with your family. The presence of God can turn columns of stormy waters into quiet streams of heaven and thereby enable us to experience steady flows of love and the closeness that he originally intended for families. Amen, church. I'd just like to express our appreciation to all those persons who made Sabbath School possible today. Elder and Sister Giles, who prayed and read this scripture. Brother and Sister Warrell Williamson, who did our mission emphasis. The unit leaders for reviewing the lesson. Sister Palmer, who did the welcome. At this time, to bring a wrap to our Sabbath school program, I'm going to invite Elder Claude Rose to do a special item for us. Have a wonderful Sabbath. You know, peace is something that we tend to pursue when peace should be within us. Jesus said, 
my peace I give to you, my peace I leave with you. Peace is not a destination. Peace is who you should be. I want to share with you the prayer of St. Francis of Assisi. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. <clears throat> Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, help me so love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is distress, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, Divine Master, grant that I may not so seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love, for it is. Evangelism. Evangelism is what we as Seventh-day Adventists have been called to do. And there will be no starless crown 
each of us must have a star in our crown. So in, eff so in an effort to make this a reality, we have total membership involvement. The total membership involvement will involve you and it also involves me. Last week or the week before we did door-to-door -door visitation and we want to continue this activity from a total membership involvement. So after Sabbath school, we like to meet with all the Sabbath school teachers at the front for the purpose of discussing door-to-door um, -door visitation in terms of territory that each Sabbath school class will be assigned to for the purpose of distributing literature and um, the great controversy to every single house in the designated territory. At this moment, I'll ask Sister Lisa Higgins to sensitize us on our survey and also on the shirts. Good morning, everyone. Happy Sabbath. At this time, I would like media to display the results of the survey thus far. Are the number of persons who have responded, who have completed the survey thus far. So I'm not seeing it up there, but I think they'll be displaying it soon. So thus far, out of the 200 members that we have in the church, only 25 persons have attempted and completed the survey. There's actually also that 25, 12 have not completed the survey, but the names are there and I'll be giving you a call. But thank you for the 25 persons who have either completed or partially done the survey, and we are encouraging the rest of members here to complete it. Uh, there is actually a tutorial on how to complete that spiritual gift survey and it's very important that our members do the survey so we know that know what your spiritual gifts are in order to place you in the various ministries of the church. Uh, the word of God says, remind me, Sister Peter King in Ephesians 4, that we all have different spiritual gifts. Uh, these gifts are given by the Holy Spirit, right? And once you are, you are called and considered a child of God, right? these gifts are, are blessed. You are blessed with one or two spiritual gifts. So in order to really identify it, it's important that you, you, you complete this survey. We want our vision, right? And the mandate that has been given um, by heaven is for each and every member of this church to be involved in evangelism. If you're not, uh, the Rastafarians say that you are not Rasta, just using this analogy, if you don't study um, the scriptures, I have the knowledge of Rastafari, right? You are not a Christian if you are not studying the word of God and you are not living out the word of God. If that does, the word of God does not come to life in your life. So it is important, it's paramount that we go out and participate in evangelistic activities it's about soul winning, and we need to be a part of that. Also, t-shirts. The t-shirts. I'm not seeing anything being displayed by the media, but the t-shirts are, are a part of the mix as well. We want to look uniform. It's not for fashion, but we want to look uniform when we actually go out to carry out the different evangelistic activities, whether we go out in our Sabbath school with our Sabbath school members or we go with our different departments, we want to look uniform. So thus far, I know I've been talking a lot. <laughs> thus far, we have um, shirt orders and we would like more persons to you know, order their shirts. So if it is that you're interested, and I hope everyone will be interested, you can contact myself, Sister Peter King, or Brother Plurit in order to order your shirts. So. Hello there, my so church family at Mandeville. Oh, Thank you for your willingness and interest 
in taking the spiritual gifts keys to ministry survey. Here is a short tutorial to assist you through the process. Step 1. Access the survey through the Manuel SDA Church Media's WhatsApp chat at 876-807-3830 to your contacts. Then send a WhatsApp message requesting the survey. Step 2. Select the hyperlink highlighted in blue like the one being displayed on the screen and it will bring you to the survey webpage on your device. Step 3. Complete all questions on pages 1 and 2 of the survey then select done upon completion to save your responses. Remember to carefully read the instructions and answer questions accordingly. Thanks in advance for your participation and have a blessed day. Bye for now from the Manuel SD's personal ministry team. So I'm looking forward to have all the Sabbath school teachers, all the unit leaders to come to the sharp meeting after church. So we'll be focusing on the door-to-door -door visitation um, and the assigned territory the t-shirts to be purchased, and also the spiritual gifts survey. We also have hard copies of the spiritual gifts survey for individuals who are having a challenge to do it electronically. So as we as Sabbath school teachers unite, at Sabbath school unite with the personal ministries department in doing outreach activities, as you go in your assigned areas, you will do the activities of distribution of literature based on the needs of the person in the area. You can conduct Bible study. And also, it is important that we all complete the spiritual gifts survey because in the month of March, there, the conference will be hosting um, different courses like for persons to be sabbath school teacher personal ministries director to be elders to be leaders in the church to be in family life but after you have completed the survey and you know your spiritual gifts then you we will now challenge you channel you now to do the respective training thank you so remember remember there will be no starless crown each of us have to have a star in our crown. Each of us, with the infilling of the Holy Spirit, with the gift that assigned to us, will carry out the commission that God has given us to spread the gospel, to tell others, and to lead them to Jesus Christ. Thank you. Good morning, happy Sabbath. These are the announcements that made it for this week. You may connect with us on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, or websites, or Twitter. Kindly tweet, like, follow, share, and subscribe. In order to receive the weekly updates, you have to add us as a contact, or WhatsApp number is 876-807-8. 3830. We ask that the names of all 
sick and shut in members be reported to the church office or sent via WhatsApp or email. Our email address is communication at mandiblesda.org. For our upcoming events, this afternoon for AY, the topic will be purple, as purple touch talk. I can't see the cursive, but it's something regarding purple talk. Purple table talk, thank you. I think, can you go back to the slide, please? The host will be Camelia Brown, and the presenters are, I see Pastor and Sister Peter King, but I'm not sure who those other persons are, but if you can see, you'll know who those presenters are. Next slide. Our praise thon March 18th to the 25th, is for two weeks, right here at Mandible SD. Next slide. Youth Day, February 25th, 2023. Women's Ministries Day, March 4th, 2023. For our Sabbath afternoon service, Bible class, this afternoon at 3.30, topic, Divorce and Remarriage, Part 2, with Pastor Joel Schillingford. For February 25th at 3.30, the topic will be Youth in Scripture. The, el the presenter will be Elder Richard Robinson. For our Vesper services, February 18th with Brother Dean Johnson, February 25th, Richard Robinson, March 4th, 2023, Minerva Schillingford. For our Gospel Sunday at 7 p.m., February 19th, theme Encounters with Jesus, Department in Charge, the Youth, the presenter will be Richard Robinson. For the 26th of February, Encounters with Jesus still. The department in charge is a vestry and the pre presenter will be Anthony Knight. Prayer and praise. Wednesday, February 22, 2023, department in charge, education, presenter, Elder Paul Giles. Wednesday, March 1st, women's ministries, Paulette Gentles. Funeral service will be held here at Sunday, February 26, that's the funeral for the mother of Grace Thompson. It will be at 11 in the morning. Please come out and support her and her family in their time of grief. The funeral service for Iris Cameron, that's the sister of Judine Henry, will be held on March 5th, 2020, 2023 in Mississauga, Ontario, Canada. For birthday greetings, we have Doreen McGregor. That's February 13th, Kimani and Kiani Marshall, that's February 14th, Marcia Jones, February 17th, and Daniel Northover, February 18th. For wedding anniversaries, we have Vinton and Geneva Mullings, February 14th, David and Marjorie Butler, February 16th. After divine service, the men are being asked to meet at the front of the church for a very short meeting. To return your tithe and offering, or if you'd like to donate to the church, these are the details provided for you. And with these announcements in mind, do have yourselves a beautiful Sabbath. Good morning, everyone. I'm just here to say thank you to the church for the support that you gave to the Peter King's family in our moment of bereavement. Certainly the, the church came out in full colors last Sunday and we were most delighted to know that we have such a warm embrace from our brothers and sisters here in Mandeville. So the Peter King's family want, wants to thank you so much for your support and we ask for your continued prayers as we continue to weather the storm. Uh, we are on top of the hill, going over. But you have been very good and gracious to us, and we're very grateful. Thank you so much. Do have a happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath to the people of God <laughs> at M Mandeville. Amen. We are grateful to be here today to convene 
in this format here. We are also happy to be in the land of the living. We are grateful for the mercies of the living God. And I would like to say that our viewership is increasing in the Eastern Caribbean islands. What do you say? And we would like to just inform our online viewers, if you have not subscribed, please do so. Like our videos and most importantly, share us with all your friends and your family. That said, we would like to say welcome to a special individual, Valerie Saint-Jean from the island of Dominica and also Lo Loyanda Brian Jefferson Philistine or Shania Carbon Arona Senville and one named Rustan Daniel is also tuned in online. Also, we would like to say welcome to our regular visitors who are here. You make our Sabbath a delight, just your presence here. And I know that there are visitors among us and we simply want to highlight you and say welcome and to give you a Mandeville SD warm welcome. Could you please stand? Amen. Our ushers are well positioned to give you, keep on standing, keep on standing, to give you a warm embrace, a handshake, and some pleasant words. Just remain standing. This is what you get when you attend our church at Mandeville. We have a few youth here at the front, and I believe they are from NCU. Am I correct? They are from NCU but they have made Mandeville as the, their church of choice today, and we are very grateful. Our ushers are coming quickly. Where are ushers? That's right, they are coming from the back, yes, to greet our visitors warmly. Yes, Sister Graham, amen, amen. Let us greet somebody in Jesus' name. Amen. Tell them that you love them in Jesus' name. Everybody, I, Jesus loves you. Everybody smile. Jesus loves you. One more time. Let us greet somebody in Jesus' name. Tell them that you love them in Jesus' name. Everybody smile. Jesus loves you, everybody smile, Jesus loves you, amen, amen. Amen. I would like to also say special welcome to Sister Royal. Sister Royal was not well. We prayed for her, and today she is here in live and living color. Sister Royal, could you please stand? Oh, she went out, but we are grateful that the Lord came through for her, and we are delighted to celebrate with her. I would like to also tell you that the Pastoral Care and Visitation Committee, we are doing 500 visitations for the year 2023. And we are already on number 63 for the year already. And we want you to know that we will be visiting all our senior citizens, our shut-ins, those who are missing, we would like to register our love to you and appreciation. And as a result of that, if you know there is someone who is a shot-in member and they have not yet been recorded with the office, we are kindly asking you to report them to the office so that we could render our pastoral care to, to them. As we continue, this week we celebrated Christian Home and Marriage Week. If it was a delight, just say amen. 
Amen. And I will tell you something that the Lord wants us to pay careful attention to our families. What do you say? And it's my word of encouragement to you to ensure that you lift your families in prayer and that if you are a father here or a mother or a child, know that you have a sacred responsibility under God to make this family work. Many of our families are falling apart Many are ending in divorce, and as a church, we are saying we want to fight back. And how do we fight back? We are fighting back with God's mandate for the family right here on earth. So we ask you to pray up the families and also to pray for your family that you may thrive with high levels of marital satisfaction. Today we end. And this afternoon, we will have a very informative discussion on divorce and remarriage, part two. And we are encouraging you to be a part of it, to come, to share, to listen, to give your opinions or the Bible's word on the matter as well. And we would like to see that in, at 3.30 p.m., we have as much persons here at 3.30 as we have here today at 11 a.m. So we, we welcome you to this final presentation on divorce and remarriage. We have a few items from our secretariat and we will invite them right now. Really delightful Sabbath, as Pastor mentioned earlier. I know you'll have a blessed day. So last week we did a first reading for some members, two outgoing transfers, and one incoming. Today we are doing the second reading. So, Brother Winston McKenzie is seeking to have his membership transferred to the Greater Portmore Seventh day Adventist Church in St. Catherine. Sister Pauline Mitchell, she's seeking to have her membership transferred to Knock Patrick Seventh-day Adventist Church in Manchester. And for our incoming membership, Sister Judith Thomas, we are receiving her from the Rockville Seventh-day Adventist Church in Maryland, USA. Pastor, this is the second reading. I move the motion for the incoming membership first. And that's for Brother Winston McKenzie, going to Greater Portmore Seventh-day Adventist Church, and Sister Pauline Mitchell. I so make a motion that these requests be granted. Do we have a second? It is seconded by Brother Anderson. There was one week lapse for any questions or queries. And we received none, so now we will move for the vote. Those in favor to adopt the recommendation from the board regarding these transfers, please show by the raising of your right hand. Could you raise your hand again, please? Thank you. And those against, by the same sign, it is carried. And this is the second reading for incoming membership transfer for Sister Judith Thomas, coming to us from the Rockville Seventh-day Adventist Church in Maryland, the USA. Pastor, I made the motion that this request be granted. Do we have a second? It is seconded by Sister Joyce Campbell, and again, one week passed, we received no comments or concerns, so we'll move to our vote now. Those in favor to adopt the recommendation of this transfer from the board, 
just please show by the raising of your right hand. If you are a member of the Seventh-day Adventist Church at Mandeville, you should vote. Just please show by the raising of your right hand. Amen. You may lower your hand. And those against, by the same sign. It is carried. Also, the board is informing the church that we are recommending that Sister Tatiana Johnson serve as assistant church clerk. As you know, we must take this matter to you for final ratification. You know Sister Tatiana Johnson. Where is Sister Tatiana Johnson? Yes, could you please stand, Sister Tatiana Johnson? She is the lovely wife of Brother Johnson. Amen. Now, is there a motion that we adopt the recommendation from the board? Those in faith? No. Could you please move for the motion? Please move. I so move that Sister Titania Johnson, as her pastor has mentioned, be one of our assistant church clerks for the year 2023. Do we have a second? It is seconded by Sister... Any questions, feedback, clarity? All right, there is none. Those in favor to adopt this recommendation, could you show by the raising of your right hand? Amen. And those against, by the same sign. It is carried. And Sister Thomas, we just voted her entry into membership at Mandeville. We will not conduct the hands of right hand of fellowship now, but we will wait at a future time in the quarter when we will be doing a bulk hands of fellowship. So Sister Thomas will be in that batch. I want to say to you, church members, on the books we have more than 2,000 and those who are online and those who are missing, we would like to see you. The leadership of the church would like to see you. We would like to interface with you. We want to know how you are doing. And the best way to do that is to eyeball you, eyes to eyes. We want to see you. We want to feel you. We want to fellowship with you. And there are many who are still at home from COVID. We would like to see you at church. I want to commend Sister James, who is here with her daughter, and all the other senior citizens. The hip not working so well. The arthritis is killing you. The diabetes is, is mesmerizing you. But you still find it possible to be here on a Sabbath, and we say thank you to you. And continue coming. We now invite our priest in. Sabbath church. Happy Sabbath church. Has God been good to you? That sounds weak, man. Has God been good to you? Yes, you're alive and you're here. God is good. So we're at that part where everyone can express themselves through music and through singing. And the words of the song must mean something to you so you can express it unreservably and so as we begin our praise and worship we're going to ask God to create in us a clean heart because we cannot worship him if our hearts are not clean so we ask that you come with us and you sing with us for those online enjoy the worship here at Mandeville SDA Church praise and worship it is let's go
All right, so let's stand for the final hymn, which is hymn, it's an old hymn. And so whatever tempest that you're facing today, whether it's family problem, mental issues, whatever it is, financial distress, emotional distress, our master, the one that we are praising now, can calm those seas. So we're asking you to stand and allow the Holy Spirit to just take those raging seas away. Master, the tempest is raging. Yeah. 
seated, we'll have our theme song at this time. Whatever your challenges you're facing, just know that there's a man called Jesus. He is concerned about every aspect of our lives. And whatever challenges you're facing, he can take it and make it what he wants to be. So just listen to the words of this song. I can take a heart that's broken, make it over again. But I know a man who can. And I
this time, will the deacon and deaconesses take your place for the collecting and the returning of the tithes and the offering? Let's pray. Father in heaven, we truly want to give you thanks for this another blessed Sabbath day. We want to thank you, Lord, for strength and health and for your providence and your protection. As we're about to return your tithes and offering, we pray that you may bless it in a very special way and that it may go to the furtherance of your cause. Bless those who have and those who have not. Lord, we know everybody have because you have provided for us in some way or the other. And a little may come up. So no matter what we have, Lord, just impress the heart of those to give. Thank you for hearing and answering our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Malachi 3, 7 to 10. Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house and prove me now where is saith the Lord of hosts if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it
please remain standing for the scripture reading. The scripture reading is taken from Ephesians chapter 5, verse 33. Please follow me while I read. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself. And the wives see that she reverence her husband. Here ended the reading of God's holy word. Good evening everyone. Today's nugget is on family worship. Family worship is important. If ever there was a time when every house should be a house of prayer, it is now. And yet in this time of fearful peril, some who profess to be Christians have no family prayer. Deuteronomy 6, 4-9 instructs us to teach God's word to our children. It is the greatest legacy parents can leave their offspring. Our little ones will learn how to worship God and learn that he is their source of strength, power, wisdom, and joy. God deserves to be worshipped in every Christian home. And a family that prays together stays together. The idea that family prayer and worship is not essential is one of Satan's most successful devices to ruin souls. Prayer is communion with God, the fountain of wisdom, the source of strength and peace and happiness. There is no substitute for family prayer. Worship is a necessity in every Christian home. Morning and evening, all family members should unite in reverent worship. How good it is for parents to gather their children, to thank the Heavenly Father for his protection during the night and to ask for his help, guidance and watchful care during the day. How fitting it is when evening comes for parents and children to gather once more to give God thanks for the blessings of the day that is past. The homes of Christians should be a light in the world. Fathers and mothers, each morning and evening, gather their children and in humble supplication, lift their hearts to God for help. Your dear ones are exposed to temptation and trial, daily annoyances, beset the path of young and old. Those who would live patient, loving, cheerful lives must pray. What are some tips for family worship? Number one, set aside time whereby everybody can be together. Two, keep worship short, leaving them wanting more. Three, keep your worship spirited and interesting. Do some fun things. Number four, make it relevant. So talk about what's going on in your family right now. And number five, keep it interactive. Involve everyone whenever possible. Even let the children lead sometimes. What are some essential components of family worship? Singing, sharing God's word, and praying. We can sing choruses like Jesus' love is bubbling over. We can sing hymns like I'm pressing on the upward way. We can also play musical instruments like the piano, guitar, violin, and recorder. You can download the Adventist Hymnal app and sing along with the music. What about sharing God's word? We can read God's word and apply it to family members. 
We can read a devotional thought and apply that to the family members. What about studying a passage of scripture and then doing a quiz? There is also object lessons. We can use a familiar object like a broom um, to illustrate a biblical truth. And there is dramatization. The family members can role play a Bible story. We can also use video clippings and PowerPoints to enhance our worship experience. Then there's praying to God. We can have one person praying, two persons praying, or everyone pray. We can do sentence prayers, so each family member prays one sentence at a time. We can pray for self and for each other. We can pray for other families, the church and the nation. We can also recite the Lord's Prayer. That's a beautiful prayer. We can cite the 23rd Psalm, or we can even read a prayer from a devotional book. One thing, be aware of long prayers. Our children may fall asleep or their minds might drift. And so remember, if there ever was a time when a house should be a house of prayer, it is now. Keep family worship short, interesting and relevant. Keep family worship daily, both morning and evening. A family that prays together stays together. And so may God help us to raise godly men and women in these last days. Be a light in your community by having daily family worship. Make your house a house of prayer today. as much as possible if you could kneel. Most righteous and eternal Holy Father, it's such a privilege to once more come into your courts, Heavenly Father physically and virtually Heavenly Father. It is not because of any good that we have done throughout the week, Lord, but it's because of your grace and your mercy that you have brought us here this morning. We are here, Lord, to be refreshed with your blessing and to fellowship one with another. You ask in your word that we should not forsake the assembling of one another, Heavenly Father. And we are here this morning in accordance with your will. Father, you have seen us through the six days of toil and labor, going back and forth each day, Lord, trying to make life, and you have kept us safe, and for that we are so grateful. This morning, we are here to be refreshed with your blessing. There are some of us who have gone cold, Heavenly Father, and we want to have a closer walk with thee, and we are here this morning, so I pray, Lord, that you cleanse us of everything that is unlike you and fill us, Lord, with your divine Holy Spirit. Father, we have often sinned and come short of your glory, but at this time I ask that you create within us a clean heart, dear God, and renew a right spirit. Father, I pray for every family, every individual that is represented here this morning, also our virtual congregation, Heavenly Father. I pray that you be with us, Lord. We have many difficulties. We have many struggles because life is not easy. 
Satan is here like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And so, Lord, we have stress and struggles. There are some of us here who are physically present, but our hearts and our minds are somewhere else because of difficulties that we are experiencing. But dear Lord, I pray that you may bring us in harmony with your will and help us to apply our hearts, Heavenly Father, so that we may reap that blessing which is in store. I pray, Heavenly Father, for the Family Life Department, and I give thanks to the leadership, Father, Sister and Brother Anderson and the other team members, Lord, for the wonderful program that they have been conducting for the past week, Heavenly Father. Continue to bless the department, Lord. You see that the devil is attacked in family. And with good family, we have good community, good churches, and good country, and good world in general. People who are waiting and anxiously waiting for your return, dear God. And that's what we are looking forward to. He continue to bless every one of them, Lord, as we continue to work for you, Lord. The speaker for today, our pastor, who is presenting the word, I pray, dear Lord, that you touch him, you anoint him, you put self behind him, Lord, and let the words that come from his mouth are words from your throne, Heavenly Father, so that when we leave here, we may be richly blessed, and we go forward to share with men and women, and they too will come to acknowledge you as Lord and Savior of their lives. Grant us your peace now, Heavenly Father, as we depend upon you. And we know you will never fail us because we have proven you time and time again. Bless us now as I ask all of these mercies to your dear son's name. Amen. little boys and girls please come forward Sabbath, boys and girls. Happy Sabbath, boys and girls. Happy Sabbath, bigger boys and girls. Amen. The title of my story this morning is Rambalan the Runner. But before I begin sharing the story, uh, Genesis has a beautiful flower here. And I need two persons to help me, two volunteers. Okay. Kaylee and Nicola. All right. So what they're going to do. So what they're going to do is that anytime you hear Ramblin doing something that he should not do in the story, the petals will be cut. Rambalan is a 12 years old boy who did not stay still. You could find him down by the river or playing cricket, marbles, or football. In fact, he was a hero in his small community in West Marland because he could run and he could run very fast. 
When it is sports day at his school, everyone came out to watch Rambolan run. One day, Rambolan's PE teacher told him that the school will be entering the primary school champs competition and asked if he wanted to run at the competition. The competition would be held in Kingston. Rambolan was excited. He wanted to go to Kingston and run and run and win medals. But the competition was to be held on Sabbath. Rambolan was so disappointed. But guess what? He decided that he was still going. Did Rambolan make a, good, a right choice there? No, he didn't. When the teacher gave out the permission forms for the parents to sign, Rambolan asked one of his cousins to sign the form instead. Should Rambolan have done that? No. no. He then went to his mother and asked if he could go and visit his grand aunt in Kingston because he missed her so much. Do you really think he wanted to? No, he did not really want to go to grand aunt because he missed her. On Sabbath, his mom agreed, the plans were made, and he went to Kingston with his uncle. On Sabbath, the day of the competition, Rambolan's uncle took him to church. When everyone was in church listening to the pastor, Rambolan snuck out, went to the bathroom, changed his clothes, met with his teammates, and off to the competition he went. Did Rambolan do the right thing, boys and girls? No. Before we started the story, we had a beautiful flower. Now at the end of the story, the flower is not looking so beautiful anymore. The beautiful flower represents all of you boys and girls. Each one of you. You represent the beautiful flower, all of us. We have been made in God's image. He has blessed us with many gifts and talents. And we are asked to use our gifts and talents to honor God. But every time you do the wrong things, the things that do not honor God, we become less beautiful and less beautiful and until our beauty is all gone, just like Rambolan. But guess what? You don't have to stay like this, boys and girls. What are the two main things that are needed for plants to grow? Very good, water and the sunlight. So we can go to God, tell him that we are sorry and we want to do better and we, we want him to forgive us. And as he pour his water, as he water us with his love and pour and shines his sunlight of forgiveness on us, you will become more beautiful than ever before. Boys and girls, let us remember, choose the right, reject the wrong, and stay beautiful. I want everybody to say it after me. Choose the right, reject the wrong, and stay beautiful. Amen. I like a little, okay. I'll ask Nicholas to pray for us. Our heads, everyone. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. 
Help us all to be good, kind, and loving. Help to be respectful and be good boys and girls. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Bigger boys and girls, as our children go back to their seats, we will sing, watch your hands, watch your hands, hands what they do. Okay, after two. morning church I don't know about you but we've been truly blessed here in Mandeville Seventh Day Adventist Church because not only do we have the pastor who is our pastor but he has a theology degree and a master's in counseling and he has been the speaker for the whole week building and restoring families what do you say church Pastor Joe Joel Schillingford has earned a BA in religion in 2007 and a Master's of Science in Counseling, all from Northern Caribbean University. He is an ordained minister of the gospel and a licensed associate counseling psychologist with a council for professions supplementary to medicine and is also a member of the Jamaican Psychological Society. In addition to being our wonderful pastor, he also sits on the board for the Central Jamaica Conference. He's married to his best friend, Minerva, and they both have two beautiful children, Jashe, Joel, and Jay, Genesis. And we thank God for their union. Pastor Schillingford will be wrapping up today's program, so please listen carefully attend to what he has to say but more than that apply it to your lives we will hear him shortly after we hear the wonderful golden chords of brother denvin fletcher Desperately, she pushed her way through the crowds. They were crushing her now. They were crying aloud. But she didn't care. This was her only hope. It was an issue of life. She could no longer cope if she'd ever be healed, if she'd ever be whole. Well, he was the one, and she knew in her soul she had to touch him. Oh, she said, I can touch him. Is he within my reach? I can touch him. Oh, I feel the healing flow. My faith will make me whole. It is Jesus. I can touch him. There comes a time when you give all you can give. You've exhausted your mind 
You don't think you can live Tormented by fear And you face the unknown People are there But you feel all alone You must reach out in faith And confess once again That Jesus is Lord and He's here And there's healing in Him you can touch him Oh, you can touch him He is here within your reach You can touch him Oh, just feel the healing flow Your faith will make you whole It is Jesus You can touch him touch him he is here within your reach you can touch him oh just feel the healing flow your faith will make you whole it is Jesus it is Jesus it is Jesus you can touch him, you can touch him, you can touch him. We are grateful to have this final presentation to bring our Christian Home and Marriage Week to an end. Indeed, we had a wonderful time and we look forward to more empowered families, not only at our church, but also in the greater Mandeville area. The area in which our church serves and also those online. The, we have the delight of experiencing the fellowship of Sister White who is on the balcony. We have not seen her for some time and we are grateful that the Lord brought her back here. Welcome, Sister White, and we hope you remain. Also, Sister Jessica Myers is here with us, the daughter of Sister Grant. Sister Myers, just give us a wave, please. We welcome you here, and God, may God continue to bless both of you. And uh, we have our auditor in the house, the auditor for the parish of Manchester. This is Sister Sandra Roan. Just give us a wave right where you are, Sister Roan. Thank you for making Mandeville your church of choice today. The topic, the sacred family altar. I'm asking media to put this presentation on the screen.
every time scripture talks about the family it's always with a great sense of holiness priority it's always with a great sense of reverence when we go through Genesis in the Garden of Eden and then we come down for the Old Testament in the intertestamental times in the New Testament the family is of great priority and as a result of that what is of great priority to Jesus should be of great priority to his church. What do you say? Amen. Let us pray. Father, into your hand we commit this presentation. I pray, O oh Lord, that the family will be saved today. I pray, O oh Lord, one pondering on divorce will change his or her mind. Oh, I pray a broken family will be restored today because your Holy Spirit will come in, O oh Lord, and minister. Thank you for what you will do, is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. The sacred family circle. If we move to the next slide, do you know what is this animal? thylacine it was last seen in 1930 it was an endangered species and then it became extinct you cannot find this animal again if we move to the next slide the passenger pigeon this was last seen in the year 1914. You cannot find the passenger pigeon again because it died out. Sister Sigrid. Then the red wolf. You will never find the red wolf again. Why? It is extinct. It was last seen in 1980. Let us continue. I will not pronounce the name. But there are many teachers here you can better, you are best able to assist your pastor. All right, thank you so much. It was last seen, Sister Peterkin, in the year 1938. You will never see this fish again. The California condor, or condor, it was last seen in 1986. You will never see this can condor again. The Adventist home. When did you last see it? It is an endangered species. Get it? Very soon it will be extinct. If when an animal is getting is in danger, UNESCO, the, the United Nations, they form the there is a committee to deal with endangered species, and they, Sister James, they will place some protocol and policy as it relates to the harvesting of this animal, its procurement, how we are going to engender its 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 multiplication and so on, and they will ensure that this animal bounces back. Whenever an animal is going to be extinct, there are invasive animals or predators that kill it, or plants. In fact, in the 
out back in Australia, there are several plants and animals, they have become extinct. And the Adventist home is quickly becoming extinct. Many of us don't have Adventist homes. We have a home, but not an Adventist home. This is becoming extinct. It is an endangered species. Some of us, we do not even know what qualifies an Adventist home. Some homes seem like a Baptist home. Or a Catholic home. Or a Lutheran home. But not an Adventist home. You see, the old traditions that we were used to, Sister Sigri, they are now being thrown outside. And what is taking place now is new age principle on the family. And we have inherited new age, Elder Marshall, within the family. And we no longer prescribe to the prescription of the Bible. We just go to the new age. And it is for that express reason our children grow in the church, but they have not yet been churched. They say prayers, but they don't pray. They come to church, but we, are, we have not churched them as yet. And I will tell you something. There was a time in this church where holiness mattered. There was a time in this church, this church at Mandeville, where family life truly mattered. At the time of Zodiac Reed, the whip. Those of you, you are too young to remember those days. Only Sister Grant can remember those days. <laughs> Sister Williamson. But there was a time when traditional family values were upheld in the church. When I grew up, there was something distinct about Seventh-day Adventist homes. I was a Catholic and a Baptist. After a Baptist. And if you are listening from the Rose of Seventh-day Adventist Church in Dominica, Welcome. There was, you could tell that this was an Adventist home. There was something different. There was something qualitatively different about the home. There was a sense of holiness in the home. And as a young man, I was not yet in the home or in the church rather. But you could just tell that there was something different. Presently, you cannot tell. If you go on a block with Adventist homes and none, you cannot tell this is an Adventist home. Because the qualitative elements of an Adventist home has been thrown out of the picture. Right now, what we have is contemporary homes. Cool homes. Are you with me? Yes. When have you last seen one? And I know why. You see, you become what you read. I'm reading Adventist Home and I am rebuked. Sister Peterkin. I said, me not ready yet, man. I'm reading Principles and Successful for the Successful Family, and I said, God, me not ready yet. And to make matters worse, when I read 
the counsels and instructions from the pen of inspiration and I compare them with the counsels I've given you here throughout the week where the scholars are concerned Ellen White was, year, was light years ahead of her time. But what we have done, we prefer hear something from John Gottman and from Bob Livingston than we prefer hear from Ellen White. As a result of that, we have packed all the books in our libraries. They are taking dust and we are now looking at the latest statistics in raising children. And the latest statistics in being a husband or a wife. John Gottman said, pleasant tones must fill the home. That the husband must be careful in the way he speaks in the home. And the wife must not be quarrelsome. And they did leading research on that topic. What makes a healthy home and a healthy marriage? But, but in the book Adventist Home, it said this a long time ago. If I can read Bob Livingston and John Gottman and Baswick and Baswick and Benocratis and all of the development and family life theories, I can read the pain of inspiration. What do you say? Because you become what you read, we don't have a TV at our house and there's a particular reason. And my daughter told me that she wants a TV. Because she went to somebody else's home and she saw a nice flat screen TV. And I told her, mm -mm, we, we don't have any TV. Your brother wasn't raised with a TV. And you will not be raised with a TV in the house. And, but what the TV gives us is modern ideas on the family. What the TV has given us is an emasculated man because mass media has reduced the man to rubbles. Mass media. And when our ladies continue to look at mass media and see how these modern people treat their husbands, we want to treat the husband in the same way. Because that is what we are feeding our minds with. The, the, author, the godly authority of the man in the home. And because the man is not reading godly counsels, he doesn't know how to be a husband. He doesn't know how to be a father. So he just accepts what society gives and he is reduced. Our men have been reduced to rubbles, brothers and sisters. If you see how they are spoken to, if you see how they are regarded, because we have gone away from the sacredness of the Adventist home. Should I stop? In the morning, should I stop? Brother Anderson, should I stop? So, raising children. We want to have cool kids. And sometimes I wonder, what are you raising them for? And there, there, there are some of us who bell ear, they catch it. Um, Manchester High. Bishop Gibson. And many of you are guilty of it, you know, right here. And I'm looking at you in the eyes. You are guilty of it. But very soon, when your child gets to that age, I will invite you in office to encourage you to do the right thing. And because we are so worldly, we love worldly choices. We have become so worldly 
that we are in a worldly home and we expect to come to church and have a Christian church. Dietrich Bonhoeffer said, the church and the home are identical. And if we have Christian homes, we are going to have Christian churches. But if we don't have Christian homes, we are not going to have Christian churches. The ideals of the Adventist home must be applied to every home in this church. So I have, I have some 10 principles there, not an exhausted list, but these from the book Adventist Home and from that book the publishers have compiled a list of principles and values for a successful family. Either of them you have, it is a very good book for you to read. If we go to the next slide it says, the home circle should be regarded as a sacred place, a symbol of heaven, a mirror in which to reflect ourselves. Friends and acquaintances we may have, but in the home life, they are not to meddle. A strong sense of should be felt, giving a sense of restfulness and trust. So in the home, it is a little church. And the parents are the priests. And the children are the congregants. And what happens there, it is modeled before them, the parental subsystem models before the sibling subsystem how to pray, and how to be Christians so that when they go to church and when they go to school there is such of an sort of an indoctrination in them that they are fit for the kingdom of God they are not little worldians are you with me and for that reason we must go back to basics and evaluate if we are having a Christian home based on these ideals and repent thereof and begin to institute them. Are you with me? No one should meddle. You know who is the greatest boundary violator in our homes? Brother Vassal and Sister Vassal. The greatest boundary violator in our homes is a vertical boundary violator or rather a horizontal one is social media they come into our homes these people come into our homes and they make our home an endangered home because they sell us their principles and values everybody is on to family life now just go on everybody is into it now and as a result of that, brothers and sisters, what happens is that they infiltrate the Adventist home with new age philosophies on the family and then we are going to have a new age church. And that's what we are having today, a new age church. And because contemporary music is listened to in the home, it is played in the church. Are you with me? I followed a church in one island of the Caribbean and I said, no man, this is a Hillsong church. This is not an Adventist church. One of the islands of the Caribbean. But because that's what social media gives to us. So we think whatever is in the home is going to be infiltrated into the church. So if there is naughtiness in the church and a sense of lack of politeness in the church, it is the same at home. The problems in the church are the problems at the home. So to fix, and there are some people here who believe pastor and elders should just fix the church. Try, you will never succeed. 
the home must be fixed first. And then the church is fixed. Tongues, ears, and eyes to be sanctified. Let those composing the family circle pray that God will sanctify their tongues, their ears, their eyes, and every member of their body. Sanctified. So let me tell you something. The way in which we parent should be different from the world. Because we have sanctified hands and sanctified ears and sanctified feet which are always sanctified before God. Are you with me? If we go to the next slide. When, when brought into contact with evil, it is not necessary to be overcome by evil. Christ has made it possible for the character of the fragrant with good. Let fathers and mothers make a solemn promise to God, whom they profess to love and obey, that by his grace they will not disagree between themselves, but will in their own life and temper manifest the spirit that they wish their children to cherish. Oh my God, we are guilty. We want our children to be polite and little ladies, but we are not polite and little ladies before God. And we fail to realize that there is a strong level of transference taking place. They observe our micro expression. They observe our macro behavior. And then they mimic them in a particular way. I hear my two-year-old daughter pray. And I marveled. And I marveled. It is a joy to listen to her pray. She doesn't pronounce the words well. But she put some serious prayer. And a mother is to be blamed. Not to be blamed, but to be thanked. And I will see her teach the little girl to pray. And she prays exactly how her mother taught her to pray. And I looked at that and I said, wow. And then you will hear her pray and there's an addition to the prayer. Because she's learning the prayer vocabulary is increasing because my wife, the mother, is increasing her incrementally to pray. And I am, I am, when I hear her pray with her brother and she will say, Joshua, it's time to pray. You have to pray now. I pray now. She's a little leader. But the mothers, you must ensure that religion is brought to your child in a very profound way. Mothers, it is better you don't have a PhD in education, but your children are raised well. Yes. Sister Peterkin told me that when she had the children, she gave them back to the Lord like Hannah. Because they are not yours. They are not your children. They are lent to you. Our first vocation, and folks, young man, brother James, brother Law, get a godly woman. A Christian woman. One of my greatest decisions it is to marry Sister Shillingford, my wife. Get a godly woman who will parent as the Lord bids you them do. Let me give you some 10 principles of the sacred family circle. 
And this is from Principles and Values of the Successful Family. Children must see in the lives of the parents that consistency which is in accordance with their faith by leading a consistent life and exercising self-control. Parents may mold the characters of their children. In the sacred family circle, character molding is done with consistency and this is something where, that we lack. Consistency. Consistency is the greatest problem with Christians today. One time we are up and the other we are down. When the music is right, we are good in church. When the music is down, we feel bored. Are you with me? Consistency. Consistency. The father and the mother are responsible for the maintenance of religion in the home. They must be taught. You know, when we were students, we were very poor. We lived in a one-room apartment, and Joshua was our only child. We would walk to, we would walk to school. Sister Gentles would give us some, a lift sometimes. <laughs> And, uh, but I recognize we did not have like internet, we never had a TV, because we were just students. And I recognized that in that period, our son Joshua developed a strong art and craft habit. We would buy molding stuff for him and glue gun and all of those stuff and out of that period he had nothing to watch he had nothing social media so all his energy it was placed into recreation and he would build houses and one day he said daddy let us build up a, a, a house with a box and we built a house and he and myself would get inside the box and close the door and it was lovely I saw it in the lack, in the absence of social media. He found things to do with his hand. And Ellen White tells us that children, we must uphold wholesome recreation and not entertainment. But our children are being entertained today. And we are to be blamed. In the Adventist home, there is recreation and not entertainment. Are you with me? Are you with me? Sometimes I wish, this is a bad wish. Dr. Brown would not agree with me. But sometimes I fantasize, what would happen if there is no internet for a quarter, three months? Let me tell you what would happen. Let me tell you what would happen. It would be one of the greatest thing to humanity. You may disagree with me. And I heard him moaning at the back. You are disagreeing with me. But sometimes I fantasize and I said, what if there was no internet and of course, Mr. Brown, Dr. Peter King, the persons who work at NCU, they will say, Pastor, well, that is problems for us. But quickly, children would play hide and seek. Quickly, worship would begin at 7 o'clock in the home. Quickly, we would go back to all the songs in the hymnal. Quickly, you will find, Sister Reed, that people begin to walk and exercise. Quickly, you would realize that people are at church early on Sabbaths. Quickly, you would realize that children become their gross motor skill are improved because they are more, they are doing things with their hands. God has given us a gift of internet, but we have made something out of it. Are you with me? 
the father and mother, you are to maintain pure religion in the home. The mother should take on, so, should not take on so many responsibilities that she cannot give time to the spiritual needs of the family. I see a phenomenon taking place here. Not here, but in... And I am not telling you you should not be educated. You should have wholesome education. But not at the expense of children. And young ladies, you are here. Get educated. Do your masters now. Do your bachelors. Do, do your stuff. Because when family comes, it is a difficulty to be in class and the children need to be breastfed or the children need time. Take your education. Get educated. But you should not be so consumed in other things that you are unable to nurture the children well. You see this photo here? This is what I know Adventist home used to be. Godly mothers who care for the spiritual welfare of the children. Are you with me? We are, we are developing a type of Adventist lady. Um, we are developing a new age style of woman in the church. Them independent. When them step in any place with them. <laughs> Nobody can talk to them. They have the keys in their hands. And then you expect to get a husband. The husband don't want you. <laughs> Sorry, that, that was very mean. Are you with me? We want to engender in our young ladies qualities, womanly qualities, lady qualities, ladylike qualities. Thank you, Dr. Brown. <coughs> now, in the book of Titus, the older women in the church, <coughs> Sister Williamson, Sister Peterkin, Sister Sigri, Elder Sharp, the older ladies who have been through life. Paul said that these ladies are to mentor the younger ladies. But if Sister Williamson ever go and tell a young lady, you know, you know you should dress a little. <laughs> Listen to me. It never go down well. And the older men are to model Christian behavior to the younger men. That's what Paul said in the book of Titus. The father is the center of the family. The lawmaker illustrating in his own manly bearing the sterner virtues, energy, integrity, honesty, patience, courage, diligence, and practical usefulness. Men who are here, how you treat your wife will be a resemblance in the life of your daughter. If you don't respect your wife, if you, don't, if you treat her like trash, let me tell you something. You are doing something very, very dangerous to your daughter. Society has removed the spiritual task of the man. And that is why we have reduced him. But he is still the center of the family. He is the lawmaker. He is guided by God. He tells his wife there. That is a mean thing to say. I don't think you should say that. Listen to me. Wife and husband. God made them equally. But a man has a different responsibility from his wife. And we must always maintain that as a church. And young man, you are getting married. Know your responsibility as the husband. Know what God expects of you and then carry it out. Are you with me? Sacredness. Energy, integrity, honesty, patience, courage, diligence. 
and practical usefulness. Take your son out to change the tire. Let him know where the battery in the car is. We are raising our young boys like girls these days. They are soft like butter. Because they have not been made to engender some useful vocational training. Let them climb trees. Let them make trap for birds. Let them plant a garden. Let their hands get hard. Are you with me? That when they step out in the place, they have some level of usefulness. We are raising them like girls. Let us continue. There's a photo with a man and his daughter. Father, look at this. Brother Swaby, if you're two children, proud of you. Teach them. Don't leave it only to the mother. I have seen many, you know, witness many funerals. Mama, mama, mama. Because silently, the father is absent. The father should be, not be a child, moved merely by impulses. He is bound to his family by sacred holy ties. And, and that is for that express reason, we must see the role as of husband as a sacred role. And we must see the role as wife as a sacred role godly role we must see it just as returning tithes and offerings it is a sacred responsibility the role of a husband is a sacred responsibility the role of a wife is a sacred responsibility we must start to to put some level of sacredness on it and, and i see something happening in our church long distance marriages you you hear about them we love it as adventists Someone is chasing the Yankee dollar. And they say we will build a house faster. If my wife go far in, listen to me. If you go big far in without the proper documentations, you, this is sin. If you go big far in and you go to the embassy and you tell them it's on vacation and in your mind you are going to work and so on. Listen to me. This is sin. If God can take care of you in America, he can take care of you in Jamaica. So we go to far in, big far in, and we send down the burials and the man is left at church to wander and roam. And he has blood in his veins. And at night he cannot sleep. Because he's... <laughs> but his wife is overseas making... Listen to me. I must not be separated from my wife for more than three months. We... Listen to me. It's either we are in poverty together. Or we are in wealth together. Because there is something more sacred than house and car and land. Listen to me. There are some things we are going to take to heaven. Not house and not car. And I will tell you something. Aim to have a home of your own. Aim to have a car. Aim to have a property. Aim to have it. The Lord wants you to do it. The Lord wants you to own wealth. But not at the expense of the family. The sacred family circle. Six months, them gone. What? Listen to me. One year, and you say, but where is your wife, pastor, if she never did go, you know? Listen to me. That house you see there, you know, it couldn't have built, you know? I said, I'm not impressed. Amen. Your wife should be with you. It is a sacred responsibility. If it is a sacred responsibility, then you need to be here. Hello? 
We have gone crazy as a church. Number three, the wife should not feel she can lean, should feel that she can lean on her husband to, for support, that his arms will strengthen and uphold her through all her toils and cares, that his influence, that his influence will sustain her, burdens will lose half of, her burdens will lose half of its weight. The wife is a weaker vessel. As much as them have talk and have mouth. They are the weaker vessel. Listen to me. The wife, no matter how educated, she's the weaker vessel. You know who built this? You, you know who built society? Man. So before you reduce him to ashes, remember who built society. The woman is the weaker vessel. The husband is to support her and to surround her when she's going through hardships at a workplace. You pray for her, you support her. You encourage her. She will never forget it. Are you with me? But there are some wives, they are going through hell and they have not told their husbands because they know whether they tell them or not is the same thing. They have nothing to give. They have nothing to share. The wife, the husband should help the wife carry the burdens. So, I should not be asking my wife how the bills are going to be paid. So, how you are going to pay that bill now? You have money? No! I must tell her, listen, we're going to do some things here and I will have a little funds. Don't worry. It's covered already. And this business of husband have money and wife have money and the husband doesn't know how much money the wife has and vice versa and she have her account and him have his account and it's not one money listen to me we need to banish that it's one money that belongs to the family that it is used for the usefulness of God's family are you with me? whatever may he is calling and his worries. A father should take the same cheerful attitude and pleasant tones with which he greets visitors. Ellen White said, when the father enters the home, he must enter with, pleasant, with a pleasant face. And sometimes I can be guilty. You enter the home and the worries just on your and the children jump on you and they're telling you and you don't hear anything. You, you know what I'm talking about. And sometimes my wife would say, Joel, they're talking to you. It is important that the husband displays cheerfulness, humility, and gracefulness at the home in the home it is proven but there are some fathers who are brutal to their children and to the wife fathers and wives husbands I'm passionate about this we are coming down your ambition should be to be a good husband a godly husband Your ambition should be to be a godly father. Your ambition should be a godly man. Your ambition should be to go heaven. Now, if you have, if you attain these, you are ambitious. 
These you will take to heaven. Improve on your craft every day by praying, God, teach me more. Kind, cheerful, and encouraging words will prove more effective than the most healing remedies. These will bring courage to the heart of a despondent and discouraged mother and the happiness and sunshine brought into the family by, acts, by kind acts and encouraging words will repay the effort many times over. A cheerful spirit from the husband is necessary at home. I like it when, Sister Vernon, Brother Vernon, I like it when the husband sits with the wife at church. When I see Elder Gordon and his wife sitting, it's a pleasure to see them. I have spent four years without sitting with my wife in a multi-church district. And I can tell you it's not a good thing. I love it when the elders, the men, sit with their wives at church. You may think it is a simple thing, but it is a profound blessing. I'm putting men on notice. Sister Mullins, if you're going to come up front. Sister Lorna will be up front. But if you have it's good to sit with your wife in church. You do not know the profound benefits of it. Whether you are an elder or pastor. Of course, when you are presenting, you cannot. Let us continue. Cheerful countenance at home. You know why? Women can be more easily flustered than men are. Women are more easily flustered than men. The hormonal changes, the time of the month. And if you are married for one year, you know that. Can you imagine you have a flustered wife and a flustered man at the home? Number five, politeness. In the sacred family circle, politeness is a key ingredient. Notice we were talking about politeness as a church. Remember? It begins at the home. Christian courtesy is the golden clasp which unites the members of the family in bonds of love, becoming closer and stronger every day. Those who cherish the spirit of Christ will manifest politeness at home and at church. Politeness. Are you with me? Christian courtesy. Sweetheart. Pumpkin. For those in Dominica, Jawamu. There, baby is too popular. <laughs> Let the children see that the husband use endearing words to his wife in the presence of the children. Politeness. It goes a long way. Number six. Above all, the father should be controlled by love and respect for God and by the teaching of his word, sorry, so that he may guide the feet of his children in the right way. Let me tell you something. Too many ladies are running the Adventist home. I thought you would say amen. 
Too many ladies are manayad. Are you with me? And it seems to be that the ideal now, because society has done it to us, it is for the woman to manayad. So most Adventist women, many Adventist women, run things at the home. And the man just follow. This is not the intended ideal. But for the man to lead, he must be empowered. Empowerment comes with leading. So you must know your role and execute your role. So you must tell her, listen to me, recreation, I want you to come. I know you have all of those things that you're doing, but... Um, listen, we have to go to spend time exercising together to engender close family ties. I know you have many things to win and many meetings to attend, but on Thursday at 7, we want to have family time, we want to go exercising, we want to do something. Lead in this regard, man. Control that department. It will do something for your children. Number seven, remember that children have rights, that they may be respected, that they must be respected. In the sacred family altar, children have rights. We treat children very bad. And there are many of our children who are scarred by what teachers said to them. By what parents said to them. But we must know that children have rights too. And in the sacred family altar, their rights are not trampled. There are many of you, your rights have been trampled. Because your parents thought it better that you, would, you should go and work at the age of 13 than go to school. And as a result, you have never received an education. They have a right to an education and training which will make them useful, respected, and beloved members of society as well as give them the moral fitness for the society of the pure and holy thereafter. Remember that our children, don't talk to them any and anyhow. Don't shout at them at the top. Wife, if you are here, don't shout at you. don't need to shout. You don't need to shout and shout and shout. The Lord doesn't require that of you. One eye can suffice. Number eight, the Christian Adventist home must be a bulwark against temptation, using every means to make crime and degrading vice popular. When we have the Christian home, brothers and sisters, it is a, a, it, it helps society. It is a model for society. It is a bulwark for society. And hence the reason why there is so much crime and degradation of, and, and, and upholding of vice. Vice has become popular. You would have seen the video uh, making social media yesterday of two young boys kicking the other in his side because he's terrorizing him. Listen to me. We need to stand as the Adventist home, as a model in our society. So they will say, you see that family? Me just love them, you see? As some me want to be. It's not only for you and the church. It is for the society, brethren. It is a powerful tool for evangelism. Number nine, we must do everything we can do to place ourselves and our children where we will not see any iniquity that is practiced in the world. Very importantly, we must not go in the forbidden scenes of pleasure. We should carefully guard the sight of our eyes and the hearing of our ears so that these awful things will not enter our minds. A 12-year-old girl, we are coming down. Coming down, you're hungry. 
was found in a room one night. The grandparents saw the light on and they entered and they pried the door. And they found her speaking to a man who is all the way in Saudi Arabia. And what he's telling her is mesmerizing. There is a, listen to me, pornography is on a rise among children. Mr. Marshall is here. She works in that department. It is on a rise in school. When I was a young boy, it was something that people saw in, in a magazine somewhere that grown people left. But now, it is right before their eyes. Our society has become so deadly that we use naked women to advertise a dance somewhere. We must guard these eyes. Turn off the internet when you go to bed. Guard your eyes. The world has many vices selling to us. Let us guard our eyes. Number 10, religion. True religion should be great priority in the Adventist home. We are all guilty of something. And I will tell you what. On Sabbath evenings, I see many of us going to the supermarket. And from a long time, six o'clock, we just enter Mega Mart. Are you with me? On a Friday evening. We have no regard for this time and space. Now I know it is difficult to work and to still prepare. And many of us are guilty. Right now, there is nothing called Sabbath preparation. We iron upon the Sabbath. Now I am not asking you to eat cold food. I am not asking you to be so regimental in your Sabbath keeping that you get sick. And neither is God asking of that. But little preparation, little preparing the clothes and shining the shoes and cooking the meal. Are you with me? I know some of you don't want to light stoves on Sabbath, but that is your business. But I want to say to you that there must be a level of preparation for the Sabbath. In the Adventist, there must be some respect, Sister Barrett. But right now, Saturday and Sunday and Monday is the same day. Listen to me. I don't want to be so... The food that the church gives is for the needy poor. It is not for those who can afford. Are you with me? Prepare. Plan it. What, wife, ask your husband, sister Gordon, say, dear, what are you using on Sabbath now? Or say, well, me dress you already, you know, I dressed you already, so go to, it is prepared for you already, so that's what you're going to use on Sabbath. But prepare. Teach your children to shine their shoes. Listen to me, we all are guilty, but we can repent today and do better, brothers and sisters. Plan your week. Plan your week. It's, it's, it's a problem not because we don't have time.
time, but because we have not planned, brothers and sisters. Let us, if you say you are keeping the Lord's Sabbath, if you say you, you believe in this, then do accordingly. So much so, you know, last night we were singing the Sabbath songs. You know, you, you, you know the Sabbath songs? Welcome, 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 bless. Far from all cares we. Listen to me. And that sounded so sweet. We have even forgotten the songs. The hymnals are taking dust. And at Mandeville, we have everything on the screen. So you don't even bother bring them to church. Very soon we will not even bring Bibles to church because it is on the screen. Are you with me? If you prepare, and I know when you have children, it's hard for you to get. I have two young children. It's, it's sometimes hard, brethren. Sister West, I understand. But we must prepare, Sister White. We must design the meal for the Sabbath. That we, and you don't have to have much money. You don't have to be elaborate with Sabbath meals. It could be a light, refreshing thing. It could be a, it, it could be a smoothie and peanuts. It could be sand. But prepare, brothers and sisters. You don't have to go elaborate. But listen to me. In the sacred family altar, we need to do better where that is concerned. True religion is to be practiced. I do not know how to say it again. But we all need to repent. I am not even making an altar call because we all need to repent. We all should stand. Let us stand. Father, please forgive us. We have wronged you. We have turned a sacred institution very much into a secular one. Lord, you have given us your guidelines in scripture and the pen of inspiration. But we have moved far from it. Wandered with new age philosophies. Father, we repent. I pray for the husband who is here that you will endow us, O oh Lord, with prince, godly principles of the meaning of husband. I pray for the wife, O oh Lord, that you will endow her with these godly principles of the meaning of a wife. Father, I pray for our children that they will be raised in this sacred environment. I pray, O oh Lord, for a revival of worship in the homes. I pray for a revival of singing in the homes. I pray for a revival of reading scripture in the homes. O oh Lord, give us discipline where social media is concerned, that we can give it a break and place more attention in you, O oh Lord. Father, into your hand, I commit this church because our goal is Beulah land. Help us to have reformation in our families so we can have reformation in the church. Lord, help us to go back to these godly councils that our minds can be fortified. Oh Lord, forgive us. Forgive us, Father, and help us to build the sacred family altar 
is my prayer. In Jesus' name. Well, church, please say amen again amen. for our wonderful Pastor Shilling for the messages. He's been giving us very sober, very sober, and truth. Let's face it, truth, and we all need to change. So please allow us a few valuable minutes just to give the vote of thanks. We, the Family Life team, would like first and foremost to thank. Pastor Shillingford. So Pastor, I know you're just catching your breath, but if you could come up for a few minutes so that we can give you this, just a small token of our appreciation. We thank you for refreshing us, rebuilding us, restoring us. We've learnt and we've listened and we're gonna bless you by going forward and putting it into application. So thank you, Pastor. Right. This, is, this is just a small token of our appreciation. If we could give you a million dollars, we would. But you know the same, Pastor. A day is like a thousand years with the Lord. So that money will be like a thousand million pounds. Use it well. Sister Shillingford, thank you. Thank you and the family. We recognize and salute you. Because we know behind the head is a neck and you have been working tirelessly in his absence, so we thank you also. The team, the family life team, Brother Anderson, Howard, husband, director, thank you so much for your tireless work. With us has been Richard Robinson, Elder Graham, Sister Chin, Sister James, Sister Jolene. Thank you so much, team. They've worked so hard, some of them are sick right now. So please continue to pray for them. Rest for a season, because we're going to be back to work again soon. Thank you, media. Church, say a big amen to media. Amen. They make us look good in front of the camera. But behind the scenes, they are juggling, they are sweating to make everything come together so good. So thank you, Sister Joan Ruddock, and all of you. We know you work day and night. Musicians, Wilton, Rodney, and all the team, thank you. Praise team, you've had us rocking and praising the Lord. Whether you came giving a song, a nugget, a scripture, Sabbath school, thank you for your help. AY team, thank you for your support. Wilton, our publisher, whichever way, big or small, thank you so much. And to you, you are church brothers and sisters church attendees, whether online or in the actual sanctuary, we thank you for your presence. And we pray again that you will take the lessons home with you. If you missed anything, go back onto YouTube and watch. There's a whole encyclopedia of learning and we digest when we revisit again. So go back again. Father God, Jehovah in heaven, we thank you for the work you have been doing in overseeing everything. And we at Family Life Team, we are here to serve. Our work is not yet done. So watch this space. We are coming back with more very soon to help you and support you in your family life and your individual Christian journey. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you. All right. Indeed, we thank God for the wonderful work that is being done because I'm sure that this process of rebuilding and restoring is not yet finished. It is for us, for us to walk hand in hand with the leaders of the church and also with Jesus to ensure that our dream of families being restored becomes a reality. At this time, we're going to pray for the online prayer requests. 
for February 18. I'm seeing Christine Davis. I'm seeing the, the Carr family and the Thomas family. And that appears to be it. All right? So Christine Davis, the Kerr family, and the Thomas family. Let's all stand for prayer. Let us pray. Father, before we request anything of you, we just want to thank you for the work that you have been doing. We thank you in each and every, for each and every way in which you would have brought your words to us this week and today especially. Lord, we come now to present before you three requests for prayer. We have Christine Davis, we have the Kerr family, and we have the Thomas family. Dear God, we don't know exactly from where we stand what they're going through. But Lord, in faith, we put them before you, knowing that your hand is not short and that you're a God that is not slack concerning your promise. Lord, we can be confident that whatever good work you have started in those people and in those families that have requested prayer, that you are faithful to complete it. Lord, whether it be finance, whether it be need for counseling, whether it be the family being separated by the different winds that blow, Lord, we ask that you, the peace speaker, will step into their situation. Allow them to recognize and appreciate your presence in them and with them. Bless them in a marked way and bless our church in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless. And the men are asked to remain for a meeting when we break. Dismiss us, Lord. Also, the Sabbath school teachers, you are asked to come.